Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, this is a terrific matchup. The Bedlam rivalry is one of the best in college sports. If you look at basketball, football, wrestling, and baseball, a lot of mutual dislike between these two schools. And on the Norman, Oklahoma side of things tonight, it's escalated because the Sooners were hammered in Stillwater earlier. They say they're a much improved basketball team since then. They're eager to pay the Cowboys back to lead this conference right now. Well, when you look at Oklahoma, they've won six out of the last seven games. And when you just feel that everything that's changed in that program to me is because Calvin Sampson has given these kids confidence. They've been hammered by some teams early in the year. Now they're coming home playing an Oklahoma State team that is on a roll, especially when you watch John Lucas play, who's the son of the other John Lucas, yep. who played very, very well at Maryland as well as the NBA, except he was left-handed, his son is right-handed. This is going to be a great game tonight, and I think the Big 12, as you're looking for this conference to step up, when you're starting to look for five or six teams to get into the NCAA tournament, it's not over yet in the Big 12. Enjoy this game. Oklahoma State has won 15 of 16, one of the true pleasant surprises in college basketball. And Tony Allen, one of the big reasons, instant points for the Cowboys. Bedlam from Norman coming up next. ESPN College Basketball, celebrating our 25th season. Tonight from Norman, Oklahoma, it is Bedlam. The Bedlam series between Oklahoma State and the Oklahoma Sooners continues on Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, a jam-packed Lloyd Noble Center on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. The standings in the Big 12 Conference, the Cowboys at 9-1, Oklahoma at 6-4. And, and then our star watch tonight, Two young men that have been lighting it up as of lately. John Lucas, the last nine games, John Sunbold has just been superb. Yeah, Lucas has been on fire. Lavender with 31 over the weekend as a freshman. Lucas won the first battle in Stillwater, but Lavender did not back down in that ball game. We'll set up interesting for the start of this one. We'll see if the Cowboys continue their hot hand, leading the nation with 52.5% from the field. Ball is in the air, tip, and it will go to the Sooners. McKenzie gives it back to Lavender. And, John, what do we see defensively? Well, man-to-man -man for Eddie Sutton, which will be most of the night. Oklahoma will play a lot of zone. Some man, two outstanding defensive ball clubs. Dietrich looking for Lavender. Guarded very closely by John Lucas. Cowboys force nearly nine steals a ball game. They get nearly nine steals a ball game. In the first matchup in Stillwater, Sooners had a hard time getting good shots off. Jabari Brown throws it away, and it's going to stay with the Oklahoma Sooners. As we take a look at the starting lineups, Graham McFarland and Bobek with uh, Tony Allen and John Lucas as the guards. You now, the shot clock was very close to going down, but it was touched by an Oklahoma State player and knocked out of bounds and now they can't get the the clock to recycle Ted Hillary standing there he is our referee John Higgins and Tim Higgins no relation are the umpires in this one tonight and they have reset it with five seconds on the shot clock for Oklahoma and expect Lucas to get after Lavender Lavender looking for the shot Lavender way outside off the mark of the three Jabari Brown tips it away but Lucas will come back and get it the name you just mentioned Jabari Brown will play a huge role tonight he's got to play very very well he's got to play great for the Sooners to win Brown almost with a steal and then he falls down. John Lucas has shot the ball extremely well from the outside. That has opened up everything on the offensive end for this Cowboy team all season. Here's Allen. They try to set a screen out high for him. Shot clock is under 10. Gonna have to hurry. Almost got a five second count. Shot clock is at four. Shot on the way. Too hard. Tipped away and it'll come down to Gilbert OU. And the Sooners opened up man to man defensively, and I think that's to get this crowd involved. This is fun. Packed house, standing room only. Lavender almost walked with it, lost the ball out of bounds, but it was knocked away by the Cowboys. So it'll stay with OU. 22 seconds on the shot clock, and their starters, Gilbert, Jabari Brown, and Jason Dietrich, the guards, are McKenzie and Drew Lavender. After losing their first three ball games in Big 12 play, Sooners have won six of their last seven, playing much better. Here comes the trap on McKenzie, and he finally had to call a timeout with 14 seconds on the shot clock. I think he drug that pivot foot partner about four or five feet before he got that That's time. That's what Eddie Sutton is saying <laughs> to, uh, to John Higgins right now. Kevin Sampson, 10th season, 
here at Oklahoma you see his numbers a winning percentage of almost 73 percent well his 10th season he has averaged 24 wins a year at Oklahoma and Eddie Sutton 14th season as the head coach at Oklahoma State of course he played his collegiate career there 23 career 21 seasons last time that they got together January the 14th was not a fun thing well and, and very typical game in Stillwater the ball game was not over early but a big spread early Oklahoma got it closer by halftime but the start of the second half Cowboys went on one of their patented runs that they do in Gallagher Iva this Cowboy team has been on fire and been on a roll and uh, has some challenges left but they're in the driver's seat in conference play the coach Sutton with well over 700 wins a lot of people shocked that he was not one of the nominees for the Hall of Fame that uh, came out today. We'll talk more about that as the telecast goes on. He will be in that hall someday, no doubt about it. Has to be. Five seconds on the shot clock. Down to four. McKenzie picked up the dribble. Now Lavender falling away. Couldn't get it to go. And it's tipped and will be saved by Oklahoma State. This is a great defensive ball play. Sooners have not had any good looks yet. Allen with the spin. The block is there. They got it back and he finally scores. Ivan McFarland breaks the scoring night. And Tony Allen might be the most creative of the ball handlers for Oklahoma State. He can do a lot of things and he's big and he's strong and he's physical. He can get it to the paint, which breaks down the defense. Jabari Brown trying to create as he falls away. Soft jumper from about four feet and he's got it and now we'll get down to business here tied at two and nice move and Brown took it to the paint instead of relying on the jump shot which he has become of course custom to inside knocked away McKenzie knocked it away and it'll be back to Oklahoma State Tony Allen a senior again he's strong he's physical but I mean, if he gets it to the paint three white jerseys around him there's gonna be opening for teammates Tony by way of Butler Community College by way of Wabash Community College. Outstanding season a year ago in his first uh, as a Cowboy. McFarland and Oklahoma had a defensive lapse because he just went free. Nice pass from Joy Graham. A very unselfish ball club. This Cowboy team, they share the ball. John, a very mature team. Yes, and, and again, they don't turn it over very often. They're great on the defensive end. You've already mentioned they shoot nearly 53 percent from the field and what that is is high quality shots knocked away in the corner and Bobbick couldn't hang on to it went off his foot it will stay with the Sooners at a fresh 35 last time down Oklahoma out of the underneath out of bounds went to a 2 3 or 3 2 zone and uh, easy pass easy layup can't have it happen Coach Sutton sitting back down quickly and hip has really given him a lot of trouble. Talked to him at the shoot around today and he said when it pains him most is when he has to get up quickly. <laughs> and of course sometimes the uh, officials either calls or no calls uh, he gets up quickly. Ball in the backcourt was it saved no over and back. If Lavender continues to only keep the ball in his hand and then continue to dribble shot clock wears down. That puts a lot of pressure on uh, teammates are not getting open. They've got to be more crisp. They got to get into their offensive set sooner. Oklahoma State's done a nice job of not only pressuring Lavender, but they got the quick trap on McKenzie a while ago. He had to call the timeout. The key for Oklahoma State, Ron, they've got a lot of same size bodies. They're all very mobile. They're not big and tall, but they're quick. They can switch things defensively. And you see there, McFarland puts it on the floor, the little runner. He's out of Missouri City, Texas, played at Willow Edge. Of course, he and TJ Ford were teammates for two straight state championships in the state of Texas. Anything about this Cowboy team? They won at in Austin, Texas. They also won in Ames, Iowa, which is becoming a very difficult place to win a ball game. <laughs> You're exactly right, and Johnny. They, and they won that game by 21, so this is a solid unit. Johnny Gilbert scores. We'll take a closer look at it, but Gilbert wearing a cast on that right hand. Speaking of Iowa State, he injured it against the Cyclones. As that turnaround by Joey Graham in the soft touch. Boy, they move well against the zone. Lucas put the pass right on the money. Joey Graham, very versatile with the basketball. Can score it from the outside a little bit. Likes to put it on the floor, get to the rim. Here's Dietrich. 
We are about to hit 15 and a half minutes to play in his opening half. Eight to four, Oklahoma State on top by a couple of baskets, and that's going to be a reach in, and Bobbick will commit the foul. It's his first and the first team foul, and we'll take a timeout. 15 29 until halftime, Oklahoma State 8 4. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball, presented by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And in part by Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance. Advance Auto Parts. And Harley Davidson. It's time to ride. So it's a good start for the Oklahoma State Cowboys on the road. You got to shoot well when you're on the road if you're going to be successful, John. And they open up four of six already to assist. Well, the key anytime you go on the road is get the crowd out of it. And this crowd was at a fever pitch when they warmed up. Cowboys come out four of first six. They've done it on the defensive end. The Sooners can't get a good look. Not many good shot opportunities early. That's been the formula for Eddie Sutton all year long. They have been solid. Well, you see the NCAA leaders, Oklahoma State and Gonzaga and Utah State at the 51-7 and 50.7. Those teams win a lot of games, too, aren't yes, they? Too. <laughs> <laughs> it helps when you can shoot it in the hole. So it'll be Oklahoma basketball. Fresh 35 on the clock, and it goes to Lavender. To see if Lucas is able to maintain the same kind of constant pressure on Lavender that he has done early on. With all the talk and all the coaches that have played a lot of zone defenses, we don't see it from Oklahoma State. That's a three for Jabari Brown. Is that his first career? His, uh, his second of the year, I believe. He's uh, he hit one earlier. Three pointer on the way, can't go. The battle for the rebound, and Jabari Brown knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, you know, Jabari has to come up big. Last three ball games, he has not been in double figures. Going to stay with Oklahoma State. Bobby to pull the trigger. Inside. Now Lucas, plenty of time on the shot clock. Graham missed Bonnet weak side. Takes it himself. You know what? He's got such a strong, solid body. Well, that is a nice soft touch from yep. about six feet there. And it's a 10-7 lead for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah, the key for Graham is that he can elevate over a defender quickly. Defensively, that's an air ball that was put up, and the Cowboys don't value the basketball, and they turn it over. And what the Coach Sutton is up and hollering right now is you got a point guard right there. Get it to John Lucas. You shouldn't be point throwing the ball over to Allen anyway. Yeah, watch Joey Graham, and he goes in the middle and lot quickly now. Gilbert's a shot blocker, also a good defender, quick off, went off his feet, but he couldn't stay with him. Jabari Brown sets out high. Now back to McKenzie. McKenzie has become a big time scorer for Kelvin Sampson. Double figures five of the last six ball games. Oh, Lucas all over Lavender. Shot clock is now winding down to 13. Lavender, because of being only 5'7, has to get that shot in pocket early to get it away. And another turnover as he travels. And John Lucas is staying in front of him, not buying any fakes, not letting him go by him. And Lavender has a hard time because of being 5'7, shooting over the top. Lucas just stays, stands his ground. John, what do you do if you're Kelvin Sampson? Again, it's got to be more movement on that offensive end, not by so much by the dribble. Every time they set a pick and roll, they're in trouble. Lucas went down on the missed three, but the officials did not buy it, saying, nope, you were not fouled. Nice move by Dietrich. Other sport basketball on the way at midnight. BYU taking on Colorado State in our Mountain West nightcap game. Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. BYU, uh, they knocked off this Oklahoma State team back in December. Our senior. Raul Joe, I'll tell you what, he can play. And I think BYU was a preseason favorite out there. They're now in third. 
Air Force in Utah, everybody thinks will be in the NCAA, and BYU needs a few wins. Let's take a look at the standings in the Big 12 Conference. We uh, hurriedly did that off the top of the telecast, but to show you, Oklahoma State, if they can come up with a victory here tonight on the road, Oklahoma State at 9 and 1. John, if they win this evening, a two full game lead over second place Texas, and that's big with the schedule that they have left. Well, and it's the key to the fact that Oklahoma State has had huge road games. They've already won in Austin, Texas. And you come here to Norman, if they can get this win, it won't be easy. And you see below Oklahoma all the teams that are kind of bunching up in this league. And I mean, it, it, we could have four or five teams from the 9 and 7 to 8 and 8 and 7 and 9 records at the end of conference play. We were talking with uh, Chris Thiessen before the ball game, who uh, is the publicist, handles the stats for the Big 12 Conference. And he said, I've already been instructed, get out the rule book and make sure we understand every <laughs> tie break that there is in the book. Sets up for a couple good weeks of play, huh, partner? <laughs> you bet it does. 10-7 Oklahoma State. Jason Williams now in the lineup with the ball. A little taller than John Lucas. I wondered if this might not be the move that they would make because they used him a lot at the shoot around today and they knock it down. Yeah, Jabari Brown off to a good start, but good find by Jason Williams. Brown now with five early points and the Sooners are within one. Standing and making a lot of noise here at the Lloyd Noble Center. Here's Lucas. The lob pass and just a little bit too high for McFarland. He had the alley oop perfectly set up and he over tossed it. Almost looked like it glanced off the rim. Maybe. And then at the other end, Dietrich puts up an air ball. Lucas quickly up the floor in transition. And that's going to be a reach in on Jason Williams. His first and the team's first. Cowboys love to run. They love to push the basketball. Average nearly 80 points of all game, which is second in this league right behind Texas. Sooners will run more in this building than they will on the road. McFarland and Lucas get a breather. As you look at uh, his dad, John II, played guard at uh, Maryland, was an All-American. And I know this for a fact because I used to hit with him down in Houston. He was an All-American tennis player as yep. well and very, very talented. Number one draft pick when he came out of college. Outstanding uh, pro career. Bobbick with the quick pass inside. Nice job. Stolen. Jason Williams got it away. Dietrich at the other end for the flush. Williams has made an impact already. Two assists, a steal in only one two minutes of play. Oklahoma with the lead by one. Bobbick, the quick look inside. Then the lob. And the ball is blocked by Oklahoma. Bobbick for three, and he knocks it down. You know, the Cowboys, though, have handled this zone, except for the one turnover. They have been able to handle the Oklahoma zone, as they did against the Iowa State zone a couple weeks ago. Bobbick, of course, coming to Oklahoma State from BYU, his dad, and uh, Coach Sutton played college basketball together. He brings a sense of maturity as well, an older player. So we'll take a timeout. 11.42 left until halftime. Cowboys by a couple. So we are back. Oklahoma State 13 to 11. And John, the Sooners extremely difficult to beat here in this building. And these numbers right here back that up. 16 and 0, 2001 and 2, 2 and 3, 15 and 1. And then this season, they are 11 and 1. And of course, that was a ball game that we did earlier. A Saturday game as the Missouri Tigers beat them in overtime here at the Lloyd Noble Center. Last year's loss was on senior day to Texas. And this ball club, the Sooners are 3-0 at home without Kevin Bookout, who is out for the rest of the year, had surgery on the right shoulder. They have won six of seven games without him. Terrence Crawford in the lineup. Also, number 25, Weatherspoon, giving John Lucas a breather. Crawford deep into the corner with the pass, three-pointer off the mark. In fact, that wasn't even close by Tony Allen. Shot it off the side of the glass. Witherspoon very quick defensively, so Williams has to pay attention. Larry Turner, unlucky on the shot, has it knocked away. And now the foul is going to be called on Oklahoma State. There will be some bodies on the floor tonight between these two ball clubs. Both attack offensive boards. They block out well. 
Graham and Alexander collide. Foul on Joey Graham. Graham picks up his first foul, and that is the third team foul against the Cowboys. Alexander, who has uh, shot the ball better as of late. Shoulder feels better. He had some shoulder problems earlier this season. Alexander working against Bobbitt does a nice job. Kisses it off the glass for two. Solid move. You try to defend Alexander for really the jump shot from the outside. Jason Miller, number 33, a 6'9 player out of Livingston, Texas, in the ballgame for Oklahoma State as well. As Eddie Sutton doing a lot of substituting, trying to get his uh, regulars an early breather. Ball is lost on the floor by Allen, and at the other end, Williams. Oh, whoa, ball. and is sent back by Allen. And now the ball is turned over by the Sooners as they have a great opportunity and don't value the basketball again. It was knocked out of Allen's hands and he hustled and when he was hustling back defensively he was pointing to Bobbitt to take one guy he kept pointing and Allen trailed hustled back what a great block. Boy Allen is really off the floor as you could see for the defensive play having a great season in this his senior year three turnovers against the Sooners four against the Cowboys. About to go under 10 minutes to play. Opening half in the Bedlam Series. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Sooners very active in this matchup zone defense. Pointing where players are, active with their hands. Bobbitt, what no a pass. pass in the middle, and the left handed shot won't go, and it's going to be back to the Sooners. Turnover, Oklahoma State. Bobbitt's very good at dis distributing the basketball. Looks one way, fires on the other. Take a look at Bobbick up on the top part, and he just fires a bullet. Should have been converted. So we're tied at 13. Under 10 minutes to play in his opening half. And just exactly what we expected in this series between these two arch rivals. And that's going to be a reach in on Crawford. It'll be his first. So Oklahoma State off to a good start shooting wise just over 46 percent but that turnover number has got to be something that Coach Sutton is uh, not pleased with with four early uh, miscues mishandles of the basketball. They average only 14 a ball game take care of the basketball. Lucas checks back into the lineup as does Lavender. And here's the matchup again that we will watch if Lavender stays on the ball meaning if he continues to dribble a lot that favors Lucas he can stay in front of him. Jason Williams gets it off to Dietrich on the floor it's going to be turned over by Oklahoma and they still battle for it Lucas takes it away on the wing he's got Crawford he will pull up and take the jumper and can't get it to stay Stevie Graham I beg your pardon a change in direction John, John Higgins came in and uh, I think he saw it going the other way. The crowd agreed. Huh? Kevin Sampson very upset. You could see uh, Timmy Higgins run over and say, Coach, uh, I know that you're upset about the call, but you've got to get back in the box. Alexander, a couple inches taller than Witherspoon, trying to back him up. Williams way outside with the three. Can't get it to go. Lucas gets the long carom. Boy, Miller was not looking for that. A mistake by Lucas as he fired it to the big guy from just inches away, and Lavender retrieves it and scores. And once again, it's uh, Jason Williams that is doing some great things for Calvin Sampson's ball club. Ron Franklin, John Sunbow coming to you from a very excited Lloyd Noble Arena on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Sooners on top by a couple. The last time they met in Stillwater, the Sooners never led in that ball game. And it was never close from the start. Weatherspoon dishes it off. Nice look, as John said. And Jason Miller scores it. You know, Lucas has not scored. He's only taken one shot. But just when he's on the floor, because of his range, the zone defense shifts to him. That opens up things in the middle. Alexander just inside the arc. It's a two-pointer. Nice stroke. So we'll take a timeout. The turnover by the Cowboys. Eddie Sutton, one of the elite. 
Oklahoma on top by a couple. We talked about Coach Sutton just a moment ago among the elite. Would you look at the all-time winningest uh, coaches in the NCAA? Of course, Dean Smith at 879. Adolf Rupp uh, just uh, three behind him. And uh, Eddie Sutton at 743 victories. And you see how he came about that number at Creighton then at Arkansas then at Kentucky and now here at Oklahoma State all four to the NCAA three of them the final fours his son Sean sits just to his right James Dickey to his left Oklahoma State does a good job defensively they already have four turnovers in this first half and of course Tony Allen leads the Big 12 conference in conference play in steel Lavender picks up the dribble, got himself in trouble, and the ball is going to be tipped. Bobbick with the defensive play works against Lavender, and he's fouled by Lavender. Well, tomorrow is Super Tuesday on ESPN with the Big Ten and the SEC in the matchup. Sorry, 7 o'clock Eastern. Purdue takes on Michigan State. That game in high depth. And then in the SEC at 9 o'clock Eastern, it's Florida against Georgia, who is fresh off a big upset win over the Kentucky Wildcats. Second time that they've gotten them this year. John. Yep. Michigan State, they've won five of their last six. And Purdue, their next three ball games on the road, so it gets difficult. A foul against Lavender, his first, only the third team foul on the Sooners in this first half. Lavender with a three. And of course, the youngster is off a very hot hand at Texas AM when he had over 30 this past Saturday. 31, hit six of 10 beyond the three point line, and had really the game winner in that one. They were down two, knocked in the big three late in that ballgame. Bobby off the mark on that three, then the follow. Graham can't come up with it, and as they battle for it, it is going to be a tie ball, and it'll stay right here with Oklahoma State. The Lavender has shot the ball well of late. We mentioned the 31 on Saturday. Now he just measures, and Lucas knows he's got to be closer than that. That gave Lavender enough look, good stroke. He's shooting with confidence, running his ball club like a leader, not playing like a freshman. But, John, if he doesn't start or continue to hit from the field like that. He has been a liability on a couple of occasions tonight turning the ball over, so he's going to have to put it in the hoop. Shot clock is at 13. Bobbick with a three, and there's a whistle and a foul inside. And that's Alexander who was called for the hole. Alexander got matched up against McFarland down low, and that is a mismatch. And Ivan McFarland was trying to go to work Posting up and Alexander really couldn't do anything but fouling. Here's Lucas. It's a fresh 35 for the Cowboys. Lavender trying to corral him. Skip pass, got away with the travel. Nope, didn't get away with it. Allen with another turnover, and he's had a couple here in the last three sequences. That's eight turnovers against the Cowboys. He's got to get the ball down sooner. He fakes one way and takes a step before the ball gets down. Did you get the feeling today as we visited with Coach Sutton and his staff that Eddie is even a little surprised at how well this team has come together and played? I think they uh, they really are impressed with their guys the way they play defensively. I mean, they get after it night in, night out. They said they have great practices. Struggled a little bit in December with a couple losses on the road. Inside to McFarland, ball almost stolen. Lucas tried to take it away, and he lost it. Oklahoma aggressive with their hands. The Cowboys are not hanging onto the ball. That's nine turnovers already. You see the numbers, the Sooners at five, nine against Oklahoma State. Crawford into the lineup. I think on the offensive end, Dietrich and McKenzie become so important for this Sooner ball club. Pretty good, both guys off the dribble. Gilbert couldn't get it to go. We talked about the cast on his hand, but he's left-handed, so obviously the cast on his right hand is not that much of a problem. Today at the uh, shoot-around, he had a hard cast on. Oh, what a move by Allen. Wow. Good, solid spin. 
The pass with precision, though, right inside the interior of the defense. About to go under five minutes to play. Opening half, 20 to 17. The Oklahoma Sooners on top. And they need a victory in this one tonight to try to reel in the Cowboys, so to speak, with not many games remaining in conference play. And what a week the Sooners have. They have Oklahoma State here tonight, and then Texas comes to Lloyd Noble Arena on Saturday night. That's a foul on Allen, and it's going to be a three-shot foul. Allen likes the physical play, whether it's offensively by that spin move or on the defensive end. He likes to challenge people. He likes to get after people. That's two fouls on Allen. And he made a comment in the paper that he struggled here a year ago, did not play well, and looked forward to this game, and you could tell he's anxious every possession. Dietrich with the first one. He has made some mental errors, though, that have been very costly to the Cowboys in the first 15 minutes of this half. First points from the free throw line this half. For either team. Allen goes to the bench. His head coach comes over to visit with him. Good look at Jason Dietrich, who had the team's high 26 in a win early this season against Michigan State. But it's not the Sooners off their 10 0 start. He's out of Newport News, Virginia. You see Weatherspoon in the ball game. They get it back to him and the soft jumper. He's well off the mark on that one. Tries to tip it back out to Lucas, and it was touched last by Lavender. John Lucas wanted Weatherspoon to make one more pass against the zone. He had an open look, but I tell you what, Weatherspoon shouldn't pass up the 15 or 16 footer. He didn't take it the first time. I mean, it was a second thought, and when you do that, you normally miss. Lucas frustrated in that he does he only has one shot attempt. Shooters get anxious fingers, anxious hands. Lucas for three, and he got it. Maybe that's why he's anxious. That's <laughs> and now Eddie Sutton's anxious. He wants he's anxious for him to get the ball back. Yeah, uh, John's an outstanding shooter. 45% beyond the three-point line, 50% overall. Again, a lot of bounce on this offensive set. Here's Turner on the floor. Crawford battles for it. And I believe Oklahoma State got a timeout. They did. That is great defense. Crawford went around Turner while Turner was dribbling and made the play. Well, as we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball, it's time to flash back into the ESPN archives. And we've got 18 seconds left in OT, and it has been everything we expected it to be, and a little bit more. McAllister's been looking for that shot. He has not been able to hit it, but they want to get it to Tisdale, down on the blocks. There you go. Oh, yeah. Two seconds left. That ball hung on the rim for a full three seconds before it fell through. And this is what college basketball is all about. It's, uh, How can it's you the greatest it? game going. You cannot match this kind of excitement. Wayman Tisdale. Of course, in the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, he also was uh, selected to that uh, ESPN Silver Anniversary Club that uh, we named a couple of weeks ago. We visited with him, in fact, on the air. And you see uh, the numbers on him. John, Impressive. You, you know, it's funny listening to the commentary. They said he got it. And I said, yeah, he got a lot of them. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of points in three seasons. Look at that, 2,600 points. Wow. Went, went early. He was an All-American freshman, sophomore, and junior year here yep. at Oklahoma. Impressive from day one when he got on this campus. Lucas flies to the hoop. Great Got block. Pass, and it is blocked. Boyd McFarland had it set back as a turner. Yep. That was unsighted. Yep. Lavender way outside and puts up an air ball. And then on the quick outlet, Lucas at the other end. Nice pass from Tony Allen. He saw Lucas. Lavender took the long shot. John Lucas just kind of went right by him and kept going. And Tony Allen, head up, eyes up, ahead of the floor. Notice his head. He's looking up the floor, and this is a silly foul by Drew Lavender. You're already out of the play. Be done with it. One left. Here we go. One, here we go. 
Two fouls on Lavender now, and he has to go to the bench. And Lucas completes the three-point play. So let's take a timeout. 329 remaining in the first half, and we are tied at 23. Tied at 23 with three minutes and 29 seconds showing until halftime. John, I'm a little surprised. Only eight rebounds for the Sooners, and only two of those are offensive boards. Cowboys doing a nice job keeping Oklahoma off. Field goals about even. Then that's why we've got an even ball game. Almost stolen. Can he catch up with it? Crawford could not. It'll go out of bounds and it'll stay with the Sooners. Two outstanding defensive teams. Oklahoma State more on the man to man side than the Sooners will be, but shoot the gaps, try to go for steals. Mentioned earlier, the top two stealing ball clubs in, in the league. Oklahoma's number one at over nine steals a ball game. Oklahoma State number two, just right behind. Him. Jabari Brown almost stolen again by Crawford, and that ball is tipped. And did he save it? No, it goes back to Turner of Oklahoma. Jason Williams off the mark with his jumper, and as they play volleyball, they talk about no offensive rebounds. Well, they got a couple on that series. Smart play by Tony Allen not to fight Alexander for the ball because Allen has two fouls. If you're Jason Dietrich, he's best at going off the dribble. You attack Tony Allen. Allen, if you set it in front of him, Allen will take it. Jabari Brown. Turnaround jumper, he's got it. Soft touch. Nine points for him. Sooners go back on top by a couple. Matchup zone has stretched this Cowboy offense out. Oklahoma State has been successful around getting the ball about the free throw line and breaking it down. Shot clock is at seven now. They get to screen out high by Crawford. Lucas will pull up and that little seam too hard off the glass and Turner comes down with the board. Alexander. Whistle and a foul on McFarland. More basketball on the way. Midnight, the BYU Cougars taking on the Colorado State Rams in our Mountain West nightcap matchup. Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. BYU 1-4 and four on the road in conference play. Kind of typical of a lot of teams in the country struggling on the road to win games. Dietrich could not get to jumper to go. Dietrich's had a problem with the shoulder, just as has Bookout. But in talking with the... The trainer today, Alex Brown, he's in a more worried about his ankle. The shoulder's coming along just fine. And let's see if they got Jabari Brown on the reach in. Second personal foul on him and 16 fouls against the Sooners. Both teams one away from putting the other into a one and one situation. Ivan McFarland with four double doubles on the season, one of his biggest games. And outputs was up in Ames, Iowa. With a 21 point win. He had a 21 point game. He had seven rebounds to go along with that. Outstanding defender. Can really run the floor when the Cowboys get it on the break. Great finisher. Crawford goes to the bench, as does Bobbitt. Witherspoon checks back into the lineup for the Cowboys. Second one on the way, and he gets this one. So Joey Graham in the ball game, along with McFarland. Game clock is at 105, and it's going to be stolen by Allen, and he will put it up to the left hand and score. He just sits and waits for someone to make a mistake. He is so quick, active. He read that pass about two seconds before Jason Williams threw it. Got away with a little bit of a, of a shove. He, he likes the physical. He likes he to does. be touched. And he likes to reach out and touch a little bit. <laughs> Good move. Got it. That is Jason Dieter. When he's aggressive, put it on the floor, attack. 
Well, the Cowboy faithful, and there are not many of them up and cheering, but the Sooner faithful are the ones looking for a defensive stop. Shot clock is off, game clock just under 15 seconds until intermission, and it is the Sooners by one. They will try and trap Lucas if he comes over the top. And there's the bounce pass. Had the perfect play and stolen. It'll pat if it goes and it's off the mark. Nice play by Johnny Gilbert defensively. So Jabari Brown, nine points, four of five in the first half. We are at halftime with a score, Oklahoma 27 to 26. Now let's send it to Chris Fowler with the Bank One halftime report. Chris. Ron, thank you. Good first half, tight first half, pretty much exactly what we expected from Bedlam with the Sooners trying to get payback for the big loss at Stillwater. You like their defensive effort in the first half. Yeah, I think when you look at Oklahoma, they're playing the zone, and it's really confused. Oklahoma State, they're not getting the rhythm. They like to go one-on-one -on -one and drive, and you can't against the zone. And a great defensive trap at the end of the half so that John Lucas and company couldn't get that last shot to try to get the lead at halftime. But when you average 50 points a game against teams in the league above you in the standings, as Oklahoma does, you better play good defense because you're not a very good offensive team. Meanwhile, John Lucas held pretty much in check, but he's one of the guys we want to talk about the Baylor program that, of course, has undergone so much tragedy and scandal and attrition. Now, look at these guys. Lawrence Roberts at number five, Mississippi State. He's been a big part of their success. Lucas, of course, a five assists to go with the 14 points. And Kenny Taylor at Texas off the bench has been very effective. Well, I think when you look at the transfers, I'm really surprised to see that Every guy that's left hasn't had to sit out a year. And usually with transfers, you must right. sit out one year. And when you look at why Baylor had this happening to them and why they were allowed to transfer and play, it's really been a plus for the schools that got them. But there's a lot of other kids sitting out that left schools for other reasons to transfer, and they have to sit out a year. So I find it's very unusual as an ex-coach well, to see why these guys were allowed to go and play right away, no matter what Baylor went through. A transfer rule is a transfer rule, and I don't think there are any exceptions. Well, unusual circumstances. That's why it's an unusual situation down there. Could you be pitching this team if they played at Baylor this year? Right. Mr. Are, Drew would have been, wow, those are some in the hunt. Quality players. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Saturn, makers of the highly adaptable view, stylish midsize L300, and the fun to drive Ion. Well, it's a one-point game at halftime, and here's the reason we're not we're not surprised at that. You can go back to when Henry Iva became head coach at Oklahoma State, and to this day in this series, the numbers are. Cowboys 77 wins, Oklahoma 76. We we expect it to be this way, don't <laughs> we, John? You know, it's Bedlam. Uh, it's been a good ball game first half. You take a look at the Saturn first half stats, pretty even. And when you go all the way down, Oklahoma State, their season low, 26 points. I think expected. The Sooners have controlled the tempo with their zone defense, and Oklahoma State's been not, not been out to get you know run and get some runs. But uh, we'll see the second half. The previous low was 27 against Arkansas. In that ball game, second half, Cowboys exploded for 47. Dietrich, nice move around Allen, unlucky on the shot, and Ivan McFarland comes down with the rebound. It's been a while since the Cowboys have had a lead in this ball game. Opportunity now. Allen with the bounce pass, then back out on top to Lucas. Nice job, skip pass as it were, coming off the baseline and back out on top to Lucas, and he cans it. He gets that extra breath to get the shot away. He has such a pure stroke, a, a catch and release type player. If you give him enough space, he's not very tall, but uh, they sag the defense in over the top. Nice bucket. Jabari Brown dishes it. <laughs> nice the flush by Johnny Gilbert. Nice move by Brown. Brown was effective the first half. He had nine first half points. He had seven early. But if he's aggressive and attacking, he's very valuable. You know, it was interesting. Coach Sampson just never has played much zone at all. He's had to this year. But he made the comment to clarify. He said, well, we may play some zone, but it's going to be one of the most aggressive zones you've ever seen. Well, and I think with his new players, the freshmen at guards, to stay in man-to-man -man defensively, they have not been able to be trained well enough in his system. 
They continue to practice every day, man to man, though. I'll tell you, they not only miss Bookout on the floor, they miss him in practice. One of the hardest practice players I think I've ever seen. Two point lead for the Cowboys are about to play the first two minutes of this second half. Cowboys have two baskets in this half and two possessions against the zone and Oklahoma staying in it. Nice pass. McFarlane, they've had an open jump shot and two layups against the zone defense. Eddie Sutton has made adjustments at halftime. Kelvin Sampson now will have to make his own. So we'll take a timeout. 17-47. And all of a sudden, it is a four-point lead, Cowboys. And we are back. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Oklahoma State 33 to 29. And now they are back over are higher than their season average of 52 and a half percent per ball game John. Well a lot of people again would question the score if they're shooting that well in points but it's all about tempo getting up and down the floor in Oklahoma again has controlled it by the defensive end. But Cowboys three of three this second half off to a good start. Jabari Brown nice, nice look and it's Gilbert and boy talk about unlucky on a shot. Brown an excellent passer. Sees over the top of people, usually puts it right on the money. Gilbert should have finished. That cast on his hand could have had something to do with being able to grip the basketball. Sooners then made an adjustment, man to man defense, forced a turnover. Lavender, he's going to take it all the way to the hoop, and the ball is blocked. I think it's McFarland who got a hand on it. Bobby gets it away inside and the easy score by Oklahoma State's Joey Gray and you see how well they run once they get the basketball any of them really can bring it up the floor the guys on the play except McFarland the rest of them can take the ball and push it up the floor last time it was out and you know John Graham is impressive 6 7 2 20 and that's a very muscular 6 7 he handles it he shoots it he finishes strong and he goes up if you're gonna grab him you better hold on because you're gonna go up with him McKenzie, yep, couldn't get it to go, and Lucas comes away with it. That's a nice job of the Sooners to get back on defense. Ron, you mentioned the first half. It's a veteran ball club. They haven't been together a long time, but they've uh, they've played a lot of basketball in different places. Well, the whistle by Timmy Higgins, and he says it's right here on the floor, not a shooting violation. Yeah, you take a look again. The, tonight now at 56%, and when we think of Oklahoma State, you mentioned Bobbick, a transfer from BYU. Joey and Stephen Graham from Central Florida. John Lucas from Baylor. Well, John, it's interesting. With Oklahoma State doing as well as they're doing, Lucas coming from Baylor, Roberts playing so extremely well for Mississippi State. Should Mississippi State and Oklahoma State oh. the flush by Allen? Good heavens, what a leap! Woo. If these two schools were to come up with conference championships, <laughs> a direct effect of what happened with Baylor allowing those players they may hang to one. not have to they sit may, out They here. may hang one in Baylor. <laughs> Just give it a conference championship. And Taylor down to Texas playing. I, I was well. honestly, Ron, surprised by, not that they allowed players to transfer and play, but I was surprised they allowed players to transfer in conference and play. That surprised me most of all. Yeah. I think it was because of the request by the president of Baylor University. How about this finish right here? Bang! Boy, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Well, what a start for this second half. They have quieted the Sooner crowd. We always talk about the first five minutes of the second half as well as the first half and how important it could be. And this has always been the trademark of Kelvin Sampson's teams that they would get a huge rush going on and seize a ball game in the first five minutes of the second half. Well, I'm sure Eddie Sutton addressed the 10 turnovers by his Cowboy ball club. You know, the Cowboys trying to do the same thing and reverse the fortunes that of the Sooners, and that is taking control early. We'll take a break. 37-31, Oklahoma State. 
Oklahoma State leading by six. And here's a reminder, tomorrow, Super Tuesday on ESPN. And, of course, that means games for the Big Ten and also for the Southeastern Conference. First of all, 7 o'clock Eastern. In high definition, it's Purdue taking on Michigan State. And then in the nightcap out of the SEC at 9 Eastern, Florida at the University of Georgia. Super Tuesday, tomorrow. Well, Gene Cady, 26 season, 24 at uh, Purdue. And, of course, he and Coach Sutton were uh, coaches together. He was an assistant coach under uh, Coach Sutton. Down at Arkansas. Yeah. All the way. It's going to be an offensive foul. Good take defensively. Tell you what, that takes a lot of guts to stand in front of him and, and take the charge. <laughs> that is a powerful body coming at you. Second personal foul on Graham. We just talked about his size just a few moments ago at 6'7", 220. Normally a charge you take it from a, a fellow who's a guard, a little bit smaller. Dietrich for three. Dietrich, not a great long ball shooter. He's better for about the mid-range game. If you can force him to take long jump shot, he only shoots about 25, 26 percent beyond the three. Oklahoma State five of five shooting here in the second half. Dietrich, by the way, two of six on the ball game, and they remain perfect, and he was fouled. I remember watching Graham practice a year ago when he had transferred to Oklahoma State, and he almost can be a point guard. He handles it so well. Comfortable. Got away with a little push off on Brown there, and then there's Gilbert picking up the foul. I think without the addition of John Lucas, we, we might have Graham handling the basketball a lot more. Trying for his 11th point, and he converts and gets it. Turner's going to come into the lineup. And uh, Gilbert will get a breather. John's been working extremely hard, and he'll go over and uh, take a seat for a little bit. Under 15 minutes to play. Oklahoma State trying to pull out to a two-game lead over the Texas Longhorns in this Big 12 race. Alexander works against Bobbitt. Back inside, Turner with the turnaround and has it blocked. And he got a hand on it first. Jason Miller was right there on him. And Allen was above everybody. <laughs> he came from weak side, but I think Miller got it. Another transfer came to, from North Texas. Yep, it was. It was Miller. There's Dietrich. And that's where he's most effective. And the one thing that Eddie Sutton had said to Allen back in the first half when he called him over there was, keep your hands up, but stop leaving your feet. And that's exactly what he did. He just picked up his third foul. Dietrich has had some big games this year. We mentioned the Miss Michigan State ball game. He also had 24 in the win over Kansas State in this building. Redshirt a year ago. It really is an unusual situation when you still have that senior year left. Yep. Now the crowd coming to their feet. Trying to get the Sooners back in it. They trail by seven. About to hit the 14 minute mark. He's going to pull up and shoot the jumper. And there is a miss. Turner skies for the rebound. Solid defense by Brown. Hard to stay with Graham, but he did just enough. Got back to the shot line and bothered Joey Graham. So they went almost six minutes in the second half without missing a shot. That's a pretty good start. Usually puts the crowd in their seats, and they've done that here. Jabari Brown. Not there. Turner tips it. Comes down to Lucas. And the Cowboys want to run. He had Graham out on the wing, but he couldn't get it to him. Here's Allen. Boy, quick first step. No basket. Ted Hillary says. Foul is going to be on Lavender, his second. You see the numbers as far as last meeting and tonight? Pretty similar, aren't they? Similar, huh? Although the score yeah. is much more in hand you than bet. it was that night. Well, Oklahoma State, that ball game started quickly again. A lot of steals, a lot of easy hoops. You know, Tony Allen, when you watch him, he shoots somewhat of a set shot toe raiser from the outside. And if you're not close, 
he'll just shoot it. So when you get close, he lifts the ball up, then he will explode by it. Well, I've mentioned to Coach Sutton said when he has to get up quickly, that his hip really hurts him even more. <laughs> and he got up real quickly that time. Not as John Lucas turned it over. Pass was closer to Coach Sutton than it was to any of the Oklahoma State players. Well, John Lucas has been great for the Cowboys, but uh, don't forget Eddie Sutton has been great for John Lucas. No, he's taught him a lot about the game. That's a that's a great point, John. Turner battles for the rebound, but is taken away by Allen. And a timeout has been called by the Cowboys. Well, there's more basketball on the way at midnight Eastern time. The BYU Cougars, 15 and 7, 5 and 4 in conference play, take on the Colorado State Rams in our Mountain West nightcap matchup. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. And I know you're going home and watch that one. What's that kid's name? Araujo. He can shoot it, fill it up. And you see BYU right there. If you. If they're having the tournament in the NCAA now, you're going Air Force. What a job Joe Scott has done. You've got Utah sitting there. BYU's kind of looking in. They've got to get a few more wins. They've had some quality wins. We mentioned they beat Oklahoma State. They've won their last three ball games, but uh, league play gets difficult. We saw Vegas yesterday did not play well at Missouri. Tigers played an outstanding game. Yeah, they were. Missouri really, really having fun yesterday as they lit up UNLV. You see the numbers by the half. Oklahoma only one of 11. They're lucky to be only seven points down. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the Cowboys have only one miss in the second half. Bounce pass to Lucas. Lavender trying to guard him. Ron, pretty good formula when you're a great defensive team and you lead the nation in field goal percentage and you don't have many turnovers. <laughs> Most coaches would like that. Lucas, the bounce pass. You see Allen having to thread oh, his nice way. Pass. Bobbick for three. Nope. Had the open look that he wanted and he couldn't convert. Alexander. Again, Oklahoma getting most everything off the dribble. They spend a lot of time on the bounces. Kelvin Sampson's team traditionally so good at moving the basketball. They've got young players. And they're playing against an outstanding defensive team. Dietrich, nice nine pass. seconds on the shot clock. Too hard off the glass. Alexander on the follow, and he was fouled. Nice move by Dietrich. Good follow by Alexander. Got McFarland up for... At least enough to draw contact. When you're struggling scoring, you must keep battling. Every offensive rebound important. That looks Ivan McFarland with the foul. He's second. And the team's fourth. Hey, John, we have not had a whole lot of scoring from the free throw line tonight, but the, the uh, Sooners are perfect. Eight of eight. Cowboys three of four. Jabari Brown will go to the bench and uh, get a breather. Johnny Gilbert back into the lineup. Good look at D'Angelo Alexander now in his sophomore season. Averages just over 10 a game. Good shooter. He will uh, continue to develop and be more aggressive with the ball as he uh, matures here as a shooter. I mentioned his ankle. He has had shoulder problems just like Bookout. But his ankle is what has been plaguing him, and he just can't seem to get it well. It's his right ankle. Lucas, cut running shot. hook. Oh, good heavens. Wouldn't even shoot it in horse, would you? That's one uh, in the backyard <laughs> against his dad, maybe, huh? I'm you know, his dad used to shoot that with the left hand. Yeah, he did. I saw his dad at halftime, and his dad is just having a dream time watching his son succeed the way he has. Yep. Yeah. Son's also a good tennis player, like yeah. his dad. Yeah, I, not I, quite as good as his father. <laughs> Very few people were. Yep. He told me after the shoot around today, I said, Did your dad get you into tennis? And he said, Yep. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Here's Alexander at the turnaround. That was blocked. Three seconds. Well, it hit iron. That was Weatherspoon who got a hand on that shot. Boy, again, defensively, a good trip by the Cowboys. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're just so active and so mobile. 
You know, the impressive thing that Lucas has done when they come with the double team is that ball is blocked by Turner, and then he goes down hard. Good defensive bat pass. And Witherspoon almost came up with the steal. So we'll take a timeout. 10.51 left, and it's 42-35 Cowboys. So we're back, 42-35, uh, just under 11 minutes left to play in our ball game, and, and we talk about high percentage. Here's one of the reasons. Now, Tony Allen has had a super senior season, top five in scoring in the league, leads the league in steals. Great athlete, 6'4", he's strong, he's physical, we've already talked about. He likes to be touched and pushed, and he likes to do it back. John, not many points tonight, but uh, he has been aggressive. Here's what Kelvin Sampson has to remedy right now. The last shot that they have hit this half came at the 1850 mark. Oklahoma's only one of 14 in the second half. And they have had those kind of droughts this season. You're right, at different times. Cowboys just do not give you many easy looks. Turner works against Miller for the jump hook, put up an air ball. Saved by Oklahoma, the shot blocked inside, couldn't get the foul to go. Crowd wanted a foul, Alexander, another offensive rebound. Got the cutter, Allen, and that ball may have been blocked by Gilbert. Yeah, Johnny Gilbert. Lavender. Turner on the follow, and it will not stay. There is a lid on that end of the floor, partner. Lavender with a soft touch couldn't get it to go. Fortunately for Turner, he had his hand on the rim, I think, when he went up the first time. They didn't call him. Or 29% in Oklahoma, right on their mark. Or Oklahoma State, I should say, right on their mark at 53. The foul was on Jason Miller, John. Five team fouls against the Cowboys. And then Turner misses, and is the first miss of the night by a shooter at the free throw line. Kelvin Sampson today coming down the, the tunnel for the shoot around. Uh, I congratulated him on the, the run that they had had going and also shooting the ball better. And he said, you know, sometimes I have to remind myself, as Turner misses the second one as well, that we still have 16 wins. And he said he probably is as proud of this ball club because of injuries and having to play shorthanded. He's as proud of this club as any he's had since he's been here at OU. They got off to a fast start, 10-0. and 0, Then they suffered the four straight losses, which were difficult games. They got blown out, but they have hung in there. And they, are, uh, they have an opportunity to make the NCAA tournament. The road's not easy, though. Turnover, Cowboys, Dietrich at the other end, and he'll score it. Nice play. Nice play to take it himself. He is a finisher, and he knew Allen had three fouls. Who was alongside him. Boy, that ends a long drought for the Sooners. Nine minutes and ten seconds they had not scored. The cutter, Bobek. Well, the crowd doesn't like it, but it has to be a foul or it has to be Oklahoma State's ball. Bobbitt continues to make a lot of hard cuts. He circles around, cuts again, circles back, and through, and McFarland put a good pass, good active hands defensively. Bobbitt, fun ball player to watch. Very confident, just, you know, very quiet, calm the demeanor. Solid defender, good outside shooter. Moves the basketball well in the offensive end, except that's an awful pass. <laughs> Not so sure it wasn't tipped there, John. Dietrich came away with it. 15 turnovers against Oklahoma State. This building ready to explode yeah. if the Sooners can knock one in. They are standing, not just the student section. It's been a fun one to watch. Jabari Brown gets it back out on the wing. Dietrich for three. Not there. And it's Bobbick who hustles for the rebound. And boy, look at the numbers. Three on one. And the bouncer and McFarlane will flush it. And did you see how, how firm he made the bounce pass? He bounced it hard because he knew McFarlane could catch it. Lavender. And Brown misses on the follow. And then Gilbert. Count it and he'll go to the line. Good idea by Oklahoma. A three-on-one break by the Cowboys means they don't have enough defenders back, and they pushed it and attacked the rim. Coach setting guys uh, for just a second. A little bit of a celebration after the dunk on the fast break. And here are the numbers, but watch as the Sooners turn around. But I tell you what, McFarland, who dunked it, was the first one back defensively. Brown missed the easy one. Gilbert stayed with it. 
The little tap on the head by Graham and the finish. At 16 fouls. Graham now has three. He will go to the bench. 16 fouls against Oklahoma State. Only three against the Sooners. <laughs> Bonus point by Johnny Gilbert. He's a 41% free throw shooter. Well, field goals by half, 48-44, and now 8 of 12 in the second half for the Cowboys. 3 of 19 for the Sooners, but they're right back in it. It's a four-point game with 8.34 remaining. Tomorrow, Super Tuesday on ESPN, and that means the Big Ten and SEC matchup. First of all, 7 o'clock Eastern, Purdue travels to East Lansing to take on Michigan State. That is a high-definition game on ESPN. Then at 9 o'clock, stay tuned for action from the SEC. The Georgia Bulldogs, fresh up a home win over the Kentucky Wildcats, are a playing host to the Florida Gators. Tomorrow night, Super Tuesday. The Gators have lost three of four, and it's the first time since 99 uh, they are out of the poll. They are struggling a little bit. They've lost a couple home games. LSU got them at home. Kentucky a week ago got them in Gainesville. Eddie Sutton, and you see that look on his face. Played a lot of big ball games in his life, but Johnny told me last year, he said, nobody realizes what this series, the Bedlam series, has turned into and what the fans, the alumni, and the students expect. You know what? It's a great rivalry, and there's a respect for both teams because you have such good coaches. The Cowboys, a little more tradition at times from the basketball historically, although Calvin Sampson's been very successful here. And then on the football side, the two of the last three years, the Cowboys got the Sooners in football, which yep. was a big deal. That's true. But you know, you made the comment tonight of how respectful the Sooner fans were as Eddie Sutton came walking yeah. on the floor. There were many people wearing crimson and cream who uh, were applauding as well. Speaking of football, that man right there with one national championship under his belt sounds had like an the, opportunity this past uh, year to do the same thing. It sounds as though he had a pretty good recruiting class. Yeah, again. He had an outstanding recruiting year. And of course, his brother Mike, now the head coach at the University of Arizona. Luke for three. It's nice to be a good shooter. He had lost a dribble. They knocked it away. He makes a spin move. He has hit some huge shots this season for the Cowboys. The expression on Kelvin Sampson's face. He had a good sequence defensively. Then they almost get the turnover. They lose it, and he hits the three. I tell you what, Tony Allen tried for the steal out front, and then he gets a rebound. Lucas inside great look McFarland scored the hoop and he'll go to the free throw line. They like to push they like to run but on the defensive end I'm saying Tony Allen challenged the jump shot and then he gets the rebound that leads the break. Good pass from Lucas sees the floor right down the middle McFarland a good finisher. They really put pressure on your defense. You've got to get back. You've got to stop them initially then you've got to settle in and stop all their cutting. Alexander's going to go to the bench. That's three fouls on him, 16 fouls against the Sooners. So both teams won away from going into a one and one situation. McFarland, an opportunity to complete the three point play. Cowboys three of four at the line this evening. And he misses that one, but Crawford hustles for the rebound. If he stepped on the end line. So let's take a timeout. 7.42 left in our ball game. Cowboys by seven. Well, on the bench, shoulder surgery. He will not be able to play the remainder of this year. Of course, we're talking about Kevin Bookout, the outstanding, strong forward for the uh, Oklahoma Sooners. There he is. You can see the strap on his right arm. And when he was in high school at Stroud, Oklahoma, he won the state shot put title, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior years. He has been invited to the Olympic trials. Obviously, he's not going to throw, but for the experience, he told me before the ball game, John, that he is going to go and be there because 2008 is what he'll be shooting for. <laughs> and you can tell he's a little bored by what's happening here now. <laughs> but the youngster has an opportunity. They say he's good enough that he still has, they're going to redshirt him in track, an opportunity to win a couple of shot put titles by the NCAA tournament time. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that shoulder responds uh, to throw a shot put, huh? Oh, no. Plays it. 
the outstanding forward at uh, Missouri will undergo surgery tomorrow virtually the same kind of surgery he'll be out for four to five months as well physical league huh rough and tough and uh, we've seen it seen a few shoulder injuries this season shot clock is under 10 for the Cowboys and Allen really kind of put his shoulder down Crawford hustles for the rebound wide open inside McFarlane got it Ivan is having fun he is now seven of eight and, and not one of them well he's had one little runner from about six feet but they've been right on the money Terrence Crawford though created all the offensive rebound Watch Crawford come inside. Block out, not good enough, didn't keep him away, and then Allen passed right on the money again. McFarland has good hands, and Allen just really fires it inside. And you see why Oklahoma State shoots such a high percentage, because they take very smart shots and they work it off their offense, and very unselfish. 69% second half. Wow. The 13% for the Sooners. And all of a sudden, it's a double-digit lead, 51 to 40. We're about to go under six minutes to play in this ball game, trying to put some distance between themselves and second-place Texas. What do you think of Oklahoma State trying to win a Big 12 conference title, trying to distance themselves, as you said, Ron. Also, uh, the possibility of a, a, a number one seed, maybe number two seed in the NCAA. Well, let me ask you this. What if Mississippi State and Oklahoma State were to get number one seeds with each with a Baylor transfer? <laughs> it's huh? amazing. It's a great story. It really is. Kelvin Sampson trying to encourage his team, but turnovers like that were just a moment ago. Simply can't happen when you got scoring droughts the way they have had, and that's McKenzie with a reach in. Ron Franklin, John Sunbold coming to you from a totally sold out Lloyd Noble Center on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. And you wouldn't expect it any other way. The stat that we gave it coming out here to open the second half, in the case you missed it, since Henry Iba became the head coach at Oklahoma State, this series is 77 wins Oklahoma State, 76 Oklahoma. That is how close the Bedlam series has been. So the fact that it's another tight down to the wire ball game, not surprising. It has been extremely difficult for either team to win on the opponent's floor. Yeah, it really has. They've held serve most of the way. Kevin Sampson wants to call a timeout and talk it over. Got a stretch run coming up here that is big for the Sooners. They're down by 13 with 6-17 to play in this ball game. Well, let's take a look at what the transfer John Lucas has done in this ball game tonight. Another solid night. We talked about his ability to shoot the ball from the outside. He has 14 points, five of eight from the field, three of four beyond three point line, but he runs the ball club. He makes sure everybody's in the right position. He moves it well. He's more stable at running it than he was when he was at Baylor. Had a lot of mistakes when he was at Baylor, got out of control. But again, I think Eddie Sutton's been terrific for this young man. Obviously, we talked about his father. He's got great basketball knowledge. He's got a good feel for it. Eddie Sutton has just been another layer to help this young man develop as a player. And again, he, he's going to get a lot of votes for player of the year. There's his lead. You're exactly right. He will. One of the things that he also possesses that John, his father, had, plays with a great passion and his uh, his dad played with that same passion for the game of basketball you bet Oklahoma out of the timeout let's see what they come up with here well he wanted Dietrich at the first play breaks down I mean Oklahoma State can switch because a lot of again a lot of same size bodies Alexander with the finger roll it makes it an 11 point Oklahoma State lead we're under six and down the stretch, Oklahoma State, a good free throw shooting team at 67%. Now the last six, they have shot 74% from the free throw line. Jason Williams. And there's going to be a hold away from the play. And a reminder, Sports Center coming up immediately following the ball game. Linda Cohen and John Anderson. A-Rod, what went wrong in Texas? Is A-Rod trade good for baseball? An NBA trade deadline. Fact or fiction? Good for baseball. Well, you know what? There are a lot of people that don't like the Yankees, pardon? And that just filled the fire. John, what was the figure we oh. came up with yesterday that, that uh, they're paying more to their infield than Kansas City's entire uh, uh, payroll? Yeah, oh, easy. It's not even close. A-Rod is a great talent, great player. 
Probably the best in baseball. We've got blood on Alexander. Or maybe that was from early on or somebody else's blood. Because Alex Brown, the trainer, walked over and shook his head as if to say, nope. Maybe he said it's not his. Misses on the shot. McFarland comes down with the rebound. Well, McFarland quietly has just gone about his business and done a really solid job at both ends of the floor. He does it night in, night out. Not a big threat from outside to shoot the ball. He's got 15 points, got four rebounds. Eddie Sutton's ball club spreading the floor. They will pass, they will cut. McFarland has taken eight shots in the ball game, and he's hit seven of them. And like we said earlier, high percentage shots, but he moves Ooh. well without the ball. He's aggressive. He attacks the rim. Offensive glass. Runs the floor extremely well. I mean, he gets up and down defensively, blocks shots. And he knows if he runs the floor on the offensive end, Lucas, Allen, they will get it to him. Well, again, to show you the numbers in the second half and what the Cowboys have done, 11 of 17, 65 percent, and Oklahoma 4 of 25 for 16. Subtle adjustments at halftime by Eddie Sutton, the first three possessions. Remember, they had two laps and an open jump shot. It has made Kelvin Sampson's defense scramble a little bit, man-to-man, -man, then zone, but the Cowboys have cut down their turnovers in this half. And when you're shooting the ball 65 percent, it's uh, <laughs> tell you what, this is a very, very good basketball team. Turner lost the handle and he was fouled. Good foul. Turner is a 31 percent free throw shooter. Terrence Crawford commits the foul. It's three on him. And now eight team fouls against Oklahoma State. Larry Turner, who is Redshirt freshman has got more playing time with Kevin Book out out and has played well. He's had some good ball games, rebounding, scoring points, but he struggles from the foul line. 31 percent. Jabari Brown walks over to him and says, "Take your time, deep breath, bend the knees, and convert this one." All of three at the line so far tonight. And misses that one as well. Ball is tipped by Brown on the floor. Lavender takes it away. Good hustle by Brown. Lavender for three. And Lucas comes up with it. And the outlet pass. And Allen has the ball blocked. And then the follow. I think it's McFarland. I tell you what, Brown ran back. Great defense. He hustled, but McFarland's right behind him to pick it up and put it in. And the Cowboys all of a sudden with a 15 point lead and John they've just put on a clinic on how to change things from one half to another have they not they haven't in the Sooners have really struggled even when they've had open shots not been able to convert I'm not sure who they gave this basket I guess it was McFarland watch the block shot good hustle and McFarland again we talked about he's a dead sprinter I mean he will go from one end to the other that's pure hustle. Terrence Crawford now with four fouls, and he'll have to head to the bench. It means Joey Graham will come back into the lineup. Ron, some players easily give up on a play when their teammates up ahead thinking well, he's going to make it anyway. McFarland didn't, and he was rewarded. A slip Two shots. He got a tape maybe on his thumb. I think he had his thumb tape. Maybe that was the, the problem with the free throw shooting. Let's give it a shot here. That was it. Swished it. What a stroke. Should have cut that off a long time ago. <laughs> the crowd really responded. <laughs> And the boat. Bingo. All right. Now some confidence for the youngster. A little pressure, but again, a hard team to uh, put too much pressure on. A lot of ball handlers on the floor for the Cowboys. 
Well, that made it a 13 to 4 run with him getting those two free throws by Oklahoma State. Cowboys look up at the clock. It's now under four minutes. And one of the things that Lucas has done is the shot clock is now at six, now at five. Bobbick, great with a pass. Low pass. Oh, my goodness, what a great pass and shot. And McFarlane again with a super high percentage. Well, shot. he sealed him, and Bobbick just kind of nonchalantly, he saw it. He saw it with five seconds left and just put it over the top. Pretty play. There comes that poise we were talking about with uh, with Bob. He understands that he, when you watch him, he just has a good feel of how to play. He doesn't get anxious that he's got to shoot more. McFarland had a hand in the face. Now it's a two-on-one break, and Lucas will take it up and uh, fouled by Lavender. Lucas could have made the play a little bit easier and tossed it right back to the rim and let Tony Allen finish with an easy dunk. Five fouls on Lavender. That's a play normally as a point guard you, you let it you kind of lay it up there for your teammate to finish Lucas will go to the foul line five points and one assist for Lavender this evening two of nine from the field and certainly not the night that the youngster was looking for coming, coming off, off a 31 point game John as you had pointed out 31 at A&M and he made some big shots huge shots down the stretch but John Lucas did a nice job defensively on Lavender kept him in front of him didn't really allow him to have many open looks. The John with 310 left to play in this ball game. It appears as though Oklahoma State is about to take a two game lead in the race. And uh, you know we've seen him on television first time to see him in person. But uh, these Oklahoma State Cowboys are impressive. Well it is not easy to win on the road and, and they're doing it with regularity. They are uh, awfully good. 61 44 with three minutes and 10 seconds left in our conference ball game. Now, there you see the reset 160 each, 130 for the uh, Oklahoma Sooners and a possession error with Oklahoma State. A reminder Sports Center coming up immediately following the ball game. London Cohen and uh, John Anderson are standing by. Some of the stories we'll talk about. A Rod, what went wrong down in Texas? Is A Rod trade good for baseball? An NBA trade deadline? Fact or fiction? John, here's something that is very much fact, and Kelvin Sampson is not going to be pleased with. Second half shooting is going to be 65 to 15 right now. 65% of Oklahoma State, only 15 for the Sooners. Amazing. I mean, really, when you go on the road and shoot that high of a percentage. Jabari Brown, shake and bake, couldn't get it. They battle for the rebound, and it's he uh, touched it last. Ted Hillary says that it was touched last by Oklahoma State. I mentioned before the break, you think of the road wins already for Oklahoma State. They won in Austin against Texas. They won in Ames, Iowa by 21, and Iowa State has knocked off Missouri, Kansas, and now Texas over the weekend in Ames. And this Cowboy team won by 21. Now they're going to win tonight in this building. We've already shown you where in the last three years, the Sooners have only lost two ballgames. That is the second three-pointer for Jabari Brown tonight. That's a first in his career. You know, when they go into these droughts, I think probably that's what the Sooners could have to do a little bit more of. Run set plays or get him shooting the basketball more. Yeah, but I think they'd probably prefer him to be a little more inside, even though he'll, he'll hit that once in a while. I mean, if you're an opposing coach, you might give him one or two of those and I hope he hits one to take more. I didn't mean to suggest more three-point <laughs> shots, John. He has had a nice ball game, though. About to go under two minutes left in this one. Lucas hanging, couldn't get it. The tip and McFarland. McFarland got it. And McFarland's numbers are simply incredible because all of his shots are either dunks or inside. He had his hand twice. He tipped it twice before anybody else left their feet. He's that quick off the floor. McFarland is 10 of 11 shooting tonight. How about that? Mm. 10 of 11 for 21 points. And also add six rebounds. Let's take a look at McFarland, and you'll see what I'm talking about, where he shoots these shots from. Well, constant, uh, he moves well on the offensive end. 
He shows there he can put it on the floor. He runs the floor extremely well. He's got great hands. He catches. He finishes. Just very active. Defensively is, offensively is. And look at Coach Sutton. He's not happy. It's hard to say. If you think this series is not important, he's leading this ball game by 13 points. You think he's down by And 13. why he is angry, especially at McFarland last time, was I believe it was Alexander came off the screen for the shot, and McFarland didn't show. Alexander had a wide open look. Eddie Sutton called a quick, or Oklahoma called a timeout, but Eddie Sutton was right in McFarland's face saying, you need a hand in their face. By the way, one other note of McFarland. He has one block tonight that's 99 for his career. Trapping defense now by Oklahoma. And when three guys trap out front, someone's going to be open over the top. Great pass Boy, from Allen. Well coached, huh? Yep. I mean, they get an answer for everything that has happened. That shot is blocked, but there was a foul on the play. That's a heck of a good block right there. Fourth personal foul on Allen. Double bonus situation for the center. Watch Allen see the floor again. Oklahoma's trapping, and when they're chasing the ball, if you settle yourself down, get it in the middle of the floor, there will be open looks. Allen, six points, five rebounds, six assists. Barry Brown swishes this one. Now. We had mentioned early on that Jabari Brown had not scored in double figures the last three games, and he has tonight 15 points. Java got an interesting week left. We traveled to Boulder tomorrow and got Texas Tech against the Colorado Golden Buffaloes on Wednesday and then come back here on Saturday for Texas at Oklahoma. You know, Andre Emmett for Texas Tech needs 19 points to become the all-time Big 12 leader in scoring. Nick Collison has that mark. Andre Emmett has averaged nearly 26 points a ball game in his last four outings. Well, let me ask you That's this. a huge game up there in Boulder. Andre Emmett has been the, the front runner as far as player of the year in this conference as that ball is uh, kicked. Uh, if Oklahoma State continues to play the way they're playing and John Lucas helps lead this team to the regular season conference win. Yeah, Andre Emmett to me is going to be player of the year. I, I think John Lucas will get some votes, but so should Tony Allen and Ivan McFarland. I mean, it, this is this is more of a unit and, and a outstanding unit. John Lucas has had some big ball games, but I'm not sure he's the best player on the floor when the Cowboys are out there. Good point. Very good point. 65 52 under 50 seconds to play Lucas dribbled it off his own foot shot clock still running six seconds down to five I don't know if Joey Graham knows it I don't think he does the pass inside the hook well he drew iron so the there was no shot clock violation impressive victory Ron you know it uh, when you come into this building oh. it won't be easy Sooners again had a drought the second half just couldn't buy a jump shot that one is not there, and that'll do it. Lucas, I don't think, will set up an offense here. They'll just dribble it. And it's going to be a 65-52 to 52 win by the Oklahoma State Cowboys, and they will sweep the regular season over their arch rivals from here in Norman. And they will move to 10-1 and one in conference play. Horn sounds, and this one goes in the record books. An Oklahoma State win and a sweep for this season. So the final score, Oklahoma State 65 and OU 52. Coming up next is Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Good night, everybody, from Norman, Oklahoma.